I can see that. Life is truly beautiful. That is why it needs to be fully enjoyed. What's going on guys? Welcome back to the Night Owl channel. Welcome back to the series where we're counting down the top Dynasty Warriors characters as of the latest game. Coming in at number 24, we have Guo Jia. Guo Jia is one of Cao Cao's strategists who gave good counsel. He shared a close comradeship with Cao Cao and was favored by him. His services were cut short when he died during one of their northern campaigns, and after suffering the defeat at Chi Bi, Cao Cao purportedly said if only Guo Jia was with us. Before we jump more into Guo Jia and how he's changed within the game, let's take a look at the popularity poll to see why Guo Jia is all the way up here at number 24. In the first popularity poll, consisting of about 75,000 total votes, Guo Jia received 785 of those votes, putting him down at the 40th position. In the second popularity poll, I would like to reveal to you the number one character of the second popularity poll, and it is Mr. Guo Jia himself. Insanely crazy to see him all the way up there. Yes, I double checked and triple checked the popularity rankings that I originally used for this list to check to make sure that Guo Jia is actually at number one. Guo Jia comes in at the number one position in the second popularity poll. And then in my personal rankings, Guo Jia is gonna drop back down to the 40th position. So Guo Jia coming in at first on that second popularity poll. Let's talk a little bit more about Guo Jia for people who don't know, and then we're gonna dive deep into his changes within the Dynasty Warriors series to see why people liked him so much in that second popularity poll. So like I said, Guo Jia was an advisor to the warlord Cao Cao during the late Eastern Han Dynasty of China, and throughout his 11 years of service, Guo Jia aided Cao Cao greatly with his brilliance and foresight, and his strategies were instrumental to Cao Cao's triumphs over the rival warlords such as Lu Bu and Yuan Shao. For example, four years before Cao Cao's decisive victory over Yuan Shao in the Battle of Guangdu, Guo Jia already foresaw that Cao Cao would win when he pointed out 10 advantages Cao Cao had over Yuan Shao. Guo Jia was a talented man of unsurpassed intelligence. He was confident in his abilities and he never feared the thought of entering the fray. He is a composed like gentleman with a wistful smile present on his lips at all times. He enjoys teasing warriors who are too stiff in their bodies and aware of his limited time and his weakened body, Guo Jia would rather enjoy whatever life he has left than spend his time brooding about his coming death. Guo Jia is a really interesting character within the series. He's about as intelligent as like Zhuge Liang and Sima Yi, he's definitely on that tier when it comes to strategists. And it's really cool to see his part in the game when he becomes a playable character because Cao Cao has such a heavy reliance on Guo Jia and it's very evident within his historical records as well that Guo Jia was a very foresightful person that led to Cao Cao relying on him so heavily about what you know Cao Cao should do in whatever situation it was. Like I already said, Guo Jia was already able to predict his you know, upcoming victory at Guandu years before it happened. He predicted Sun Se's death, and he advised on how to deal with Liu Bei the right way that led to Sasao becoming the hero of chaos that he was known for. I think Guo Jia played a huge part in Cao Cao's path within the game and within history. I don't think Cao Cao's path would have gone as smoothly if it wasn't for Guo Jia. Cao Cao had a lot of talented officers underneath him and a lot of talented strategists as well. Guo Jia was actually responsible for bringing in some of these strategists and officers and making Cao Cao's army a little bit more well-rounded and stronger. And I heavily believe that a lot of the early success that Cao Cao had as a warlord was due to Guo Jia's suggestions and advice. We'll dive a little deeper into his relationship with Cao Cao and of course all the battles that Guo Jia advised him on later on in the video. But let's go ahead and jump into how Guo Jia has changed within the series. He's not going to have too big of changes because he's only been in two main series games. But with that being said, let's go ahead and start talking about the change in his appearance. His appearance in both Dynasty Warriors 8 and Dynasty Warriors 9 was genuinely fine. I didn't have anything against the way Guo Jia looked. I think it fit him as a character and as a strategist, and I don't personally have anything against Guo Jia. I actually liked, I think his appearance is actually the strongest point of the character overall for the character. Now, moving on to his weapon style. So for me, he was 40th, and this was off the preconception of what I remembered him for when I originally made the list. But after replaying through his stories, uh, just getting a feel for the character again, for me, he's going to be a little bit lower next time. 
and one of the main reasons is going to be his weapon style. So in the first game, he gets the Orb and Scepter, and unfortunately for me, I didn't have that much fun playing it. At least not as much fun as I remembered. When I originally made the list, I guess, again, that preconception of playing with him before was a lot more fun than playing with him recently. I don't know what it was, it just, the weapon was kind of slow and it was just not as fun as I remembered. I would say it was a very underwhelming weapon style and I just didn't really enjoy it as much as I remembered. So for me personally, the weapon style for him in Dynasty Warriors 8 wasn't that enjoyable. I think it's a good weapon. I thought, you know, him having the scepter was great. The orb was a little ridiculous, of course, a floating orb out of nowhere, but you know, I thought the scepter was cool. I thought it would fit him as a character. I just didn't particularly enjoy it that much. And then in Dynasty Wars 9, he basically gets a staff. And it's a pretty good weapon. I liked it better than the Scepter. It was a lot more fluid, more fun. That could just be the mechanics of Dynasty Wars 9. But it was just more fun to play with versus the Scepter. And it still fit him as a character. I thought it fit him pretty well. Didn't have anything to complain about. The Musao attacks in both the games were okay. They are average. You know, nothing too crazy. I wouldn't say they were super underwhelming. Maybe the Scepter was a little underwhelming. But it wasn't anything too crazy where I would want to, like, use his weapon in a created character for like an Empire's game or anything, it was just an average weapon, and the Musao attacks fall along with that average weapon. The most fun I had with the character in terms of weapon style was the moveset that he has for Dynasty Wars 9. So the regular, you know, attacks that he has along with the specials, those were fine. I just think the Musao attacks were okay, and the Orban Scepter wasn't as good as I remember. Now, moving on to his voice acting, he gets two different voice actors. He's got one in Dynasty Warriors 8. Too soon to say. It takes more than trickery to capture a castle. And he gets a different one in Dynasty Warriors 9. Your exploitation of you and Chao's weakness in that battle was exceptional. The one in Dynasty Warriors 8 was okay, but didn't really like it. Like, I thought it fit fine for Guo Jia, but it's because of the who the voice actor plays in the series Naruto that I watch. I'm seeing that character when Guo Jia is talking and it's not fitting correctly. So I could be biased with his voice acting. I tried to look at it from a non-biased perspective and non-biased perspective, it, it's okay. Like it's a decent voice for him. I think his Dynasty Warriors 9 voice is way better than Dynasty Warriors 8, in my opinion. But, that, but again, I could be biased because of what I'm hearing and what I've correlated that voice with. And for me, it just, when I was replaying through his story and listening to the cutscenes and everything, it just didn't sound as good as I thought it did. It just, something was off. So the Dynasty Wars 8 voice acting for me wasn't very, it was good. Like the voice actor did a great job, but I don't think it fit for Guo Jia. But for Dynasty Wars 9, I thought it was great. I thought he did a, a great job for Guo Jia. I thought it fit him. Unfortunately for me, that's why he would fall a little lower. I didn't like the Orban Scepter weapon style. I didn't like the voice acting. The appearance for me was the strongest point of the character in Dynasty Wars 8. And then Dynasty Wars 9, I thought he was relatively average. Voice acting was really good. You know, appearance is fine. Uh, the weapon style was good relatively. But for me, he's not a character that I would claim to try to play again. He's interesting to see. I like his relationships. I guess we'll just go ahead and talk about his relationship. I like his relationship within the game. I always like to see the dynamics that characters have within the game. But within the game, Guo Jia, I would say the, the most significant relationships he's gonna have is gonna be with, of course, Cao Cao. And then he's gonna have a significant relationship with Shun Yo, Shun Wu, and Jia Shu. He, you can also say he has a minor relationship with Man Chong because I believe Guo Jia is the one that brings him in. So they kind of have a minor relationship. It's not like super close or anything, but they're both strategists and Man Chong's always around the other strategists and having conversations and stuff. But those four, I would say, are the main ones that he has a relationship with. Starting off with his relationship with Cao Cao, the most important one within the game, because Guo Jia is the one, I believe, that shapes Cao Cao's path really, really well. Of course, the other strategists and everyone plays a big role in everything, but, you know, I think Guo Jia was a main factor of that. I think he was, like, the head of the strategists because Guo Jia was the one that was always consulted on like immediately like he was the one that Cao Cao looked to for that immediate advice and because of the foresight that Guo Jia would, would repeatedly show Cao Cao would begin to rely on Guo Jia's suggestions and advice on how to deal with things that were upcoming that's why Cao Cao was quoted to say if Guo Jia was at the battle of Chibi none of that would have happened because he would have had Guo Jia there to a system. But Guo Jia and Cao Cao have an extremely close relationship. It's beyond just a ruler and vassal relationship. I would say it's definitely a cherished and treasured friendship, you know, comradeship that Cao Cao has for Guo Jia because he's able to provide so much value to Cao Cao. And then moving on to his other three significant relationships, we have Jia Xu, Shun Wu, and Shun Yo. Out of those three, I think his 
relationship with Jiao Shu is probably the closest just because Jiao Shu was a playable character before uh, Shun Wu and Shun Yo. But very close relationship with all three of those. And that's because, you know, Guo Jiao and Jiao Shu, after Jiao Shu gets brought in, Guo Jiao was actually impressed with Jiao Shu's strategy at Wan Castle, which led to the death of Dian Wei and, of course, catching Sao Sao off guard. Uh, Guo Jia and Jiaoshu had a very close relationship all the way up until Guo Jia's death. And in earlier games, Dynasty Warriors 8, it's Jiaoshu who recognizes that Guo Jia is sick and not feeling well. And in Dynasty Warriors 9, it's Shun Wu who actually recognizes that Guo Jia is a little sick. Because of that, Guo Jia had that close relationship with Shun Wu, of course, up until Guo Jia passed away. Now, let's talk about his significant battles within the game. So, the most significant battle that Guo Jia has within the game is going to be at Jia Pi and Guan Du. So, these two are the most significant ones because it's really the only two that he really gets to be a part of. Of course, like the, you know, smaller battles in between that. Jia Pi and Guan Du were the two biggest ones that he had the biggest impact on. So, the battle of Jia Pi was very important for Guo Jia because at this point in time, you know, Sao Sao had beaten back Lu Bu's troops and he wanted to suppress the attack, but he was actually considering withdrawing because because his troops were tired and they were weary of battle. However, Guo Jia and Shun Yo told Sao Sao that Lu Bu was courageous, he was strong, but his army's morale was so low because he had already lost so many battles, they had a chance to turn that against him. So what they did was advise Sao Sao to flood the castle of where Lu Bu was at in order to triumph in battle, which ended up actually happening. And then moving on to the Battle of Guangdu, again, Guo Jia had the foresight to tell Cao Cao. It's, it's well documented with, within you know historical records that uh, Guo Jia explained 10 different advantages that Cao Cao had over Yuan Shao. So I would say Guo Jia's role in Guangdu wasn't as a main strategist because I believe the plan for you know letting them have Bai Ma and Yan Jin was more of Jia Xu's idea. I think Jia Xu played a bigger role as a strategist in this battle, but Guo Jia was there to polish and of course fill in any holes that any of the other strategists couldn't fill. And like I said, of course, giving Cao Cao that morale boost of giving him those 10 advantages over him, which encouraged Cao Cao to take on Yuan Shao at Guangdu and ended up prevailing over him. He played a really good role in guiding Cao Cao along his path when Cao Cao was ever hesitant or confused about which way he thinks he should go. For example, Cao Cao would regularly ask about Liu Bei and how he should treat Liu Bei and what he should do. And Guo Jia was the one to tell him to basically spare and take in Liu Bei because Cao Cao at this point in time was, was attracted talented and capable people to serve him because he was being sincere and he had integrity but at that point in time Liu Bei was slowly being known as a hero so if you you know brought him into your service and killed him Sasa would end up being viewed as someone who harms men of virtue and then other talented people start to doubt you and then change their mind about you and if that happens I mean who's gonna help achieve you know Sao Sao's goal so I think it was imperative that Guo Jia told him that it was important to bring Liu Bei into his ranks but to not do anything malicious to him of course the exchange that they had with each other um, led to Sao Sao being able to borrow Guan Yu up until the battle of Guan Du within the game of course Liu Bei left and ended up you know becoming an enemy me of Sao Sao eventually, but because of that early advice that Guo Jia gave, I believe you know, Sao Sao ended up making the right decision that led him to becoming the commander that he's known for in history. Because up at that point, again, he was already predicting Sun Se's death, he's predicting the victory over Guan Du before these things are even happening. You know, he's predicting how he sees the battle with Lu Bu going, and he has this foresight, he has this intuition, and Sao Sao is going to follow along with that and listen to what he has to say. And then finally, Let's talk about Guo Jia's death. So Guo Jia fell ill following Sao Sao's victory with Yuan Shao's son. Not long after that point, he ended up passing away. So this illness that came and affected Guo Jia ended up killing him in the end. Both of the games show this affliction, of course, affecting him. And he ends up passing away early within the series because of this affliction. Again, Sao Sao grieved deeply when Guo Jia had passed away. You know, again, he was the person that when Sao Sao couldn't decide on what to do, Guo Jia was the one who helped him arrive at his decisions. He made great contributions to, you know, helping Sao Sao up until that point. And it was very unfortunate that he died very early and was unable to help Sao Sao any further. And then again, Sao Sao would revisit the death of Guo Jia after the Battle of Chi Bi because he believed that if he was around, the Battle of Chi Bi wouldn't have gone 
the way it went. But that's all I really have for Guajia here, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, again, he was first in that second popularity poll. I'm sure there's some great fans out there for Guajia. Let me know what you guys think about him down below. If you guys like him and what you guys, you know, think about Guajia. Again, for me, he's going to be probably a little lower for me next time. I didn't really like his Orb and Scepter. Unless he improves in, like, Dynasty Warriors 10, uh, I can see him going a little higher. But, you know, I liked him more in Dynasty Warriors 9. I thought he was, you know, he was a better character in Dynasty Wars 9. Dynasty Wars 8 was not his strongest point. For me personally. But yeah, that's all I have for Gorgia, cool guys. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, I definitely appreciate it. Like, comment, or subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching, everyone. Hey, fool,